Hey guys, Mike from Nerd Problems Gaming here and welcome to Nerd Problems Gaming, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. In today's video, I'll be doing a review of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Is it worth it? Is it as good as Castlevania? Stay tuned. So if you're not really familiar with this game, it's kind of like the spiritual successor to Castlevania and the Castlevania series. And so, you know, for a number of years, uh, Castlevania is one of my favorite franchises, favorite games to play. And so that was the same kind of feeling a lot of people had. It kind of sparked the movement of like the Metroidvania type games. So Castlevania is the, that half of it. And so it kind of started with um, Castlevania Symphony of the Night and then also uh, Super Metroid. And so that kind of genre kind of came together and became the Metroidvania uh, genre. And so, you know, Symphony of the Night is one of the favorite games of a lot of people in the Castlevania series, but um, they made a lot of good ones too on like the Game Boy Advance, you know, the DS, and it, that's kind of where it ended, unfortunately. They haven't really had uh, a good Castlevania game uh, side-scrolling metrovania style uh, for a long time and a lot of people felt even the later ones that did come out never really lived up to that symphony of the night game and so uh, i have a number of years of really nothing coming out from konami right the creators of castlevania uh, actually the one of the founders and creators of the castlevania series really left and uh, created this bloodstained uh, kickstarter game uh, which would kind of basically recreate that feeling again kind of that spiritual successor um, of castlevania and so this game really got pushed out delayed over and over and over again but it is finally out so we can finally play it so again you know does this really live up to symphony of the night the other castlevania games can it stand on its own uh so let's get into it and so first thing you kind of play as miriam and she is like a shard holder right um and shard binder and basically she kind of like has magical powers um can create shards from demons and absorb those and really get their powers and so you kind of play as her throughout the game trying to stop uh g -Bill, who is kind of a, another shard binder as well and basically what happens is you try and go through uh the castle that was created to really defeat them and make sure that they don't release kind of this ultra super demon onto the world and really destroy the world and so that's kind of the storyline um beyond that I didn't really care for the story like it wasn't super engaging it didn't really suck me in it was just kind of like okay cool like this stuff's going on whatever that's fine like get back to the gameplay and so that was one thing that i kind of found as a difference between you know this bloodstained series and like the castlevania series where i really enjoy the storyline of the castlevania games you know you're the belmont clan you're alucard you're fighting dracula you know somebody summons him every few hundred years and it's your job to stop them and so i really like that kind of lore that background of the castlevania series but again with this series didn't really draw me in a whole lot it was interesting it was fun to play as but i wasn't really as engaged with the story um, compared to like a Castlevania game. And so that was one thing that I definitely uh, noticed. But gameplay is awesome. So if you uh, like Metroidvania games, you like Castlevania games, I think that you'll definitely really enjoy this game. And so uh, it kind of steals on the idea kind of with the dawn of sorrow and the area of sorrow castlevania game so as you kill monsters you can absorb their shards instead of their souls but it's basically the exact same thing and then you get their powers and so there's a variety of different um, features of powers that you can have so you can have like active weapon attacking ones um, stuff that will kind of enhance your character so like it'll improve you know your katana ability their your sword ability improve your luck you know various things like that and so it's, what's cool is there's a whole uh, menu system where you can mix and match all these different shards together and really customize your character and play in a play style that you like and so I really like that that was super addicting um, to be able to do that trying to collect all the monster shards but on top of that they kind of took it to a new level in this game where instead of just 
collecting them and having that power. While you do that, you can also collect multiple versions and then that's gonna actually increase the strength of the shard, of the ability, but then you can also get to a point where you get to a store and you can basically upgrade these different shards. And so that's really cool too. So as you collect different weapons and items, um, as you play through, you can actually enhance these shards even further and then they get different abilities, which is neat. And so, you know, there's like a throwing ax one that you can use. I use that one all the time and it like increases the size. So it takes up more of the screen. And so there's all kinds of different things like that as you play. There's also kind of like shards that you have that will enhance maybe your stats, for example, or uh, do a regeneration of your HP as you play. And so an example is that you, if you upgrade that all the way, it then actually becomes a permanent stat on your character. So I thought that was really cool new addition to kind of the Castlevania style uh, with it. So you have that, you know, there's hundreds of weapons, pieces of armor, rings, items that you can find. And that's really cool too, uh, being able to collect all those different ones. And again, like I said, when you actually get to the point of the story of getting the store, it actually allows you to basically craft items uh, from what you have, uh, enhance shards, dismantle items, which is really cool too. So if you need specific components from weapons, you can dismantle them get more from monsters as you kill them. So it just really extensive uh, item categories and upgrades as well in the game. So I really enjoyed that part of it. That was really fun and addicting. And one thing that was really cool too is basically in like the beastry, right, menu that you can go into, you can research like the different demons and they'll actually say what items they drop, what souls they drop, or what shards, excuse me, they drop. Um, and then basically like the drop rate of them as well. So that's really cool. And you can go through like seeing the different items. So maybe you found an item throughout your journey or you need an item. If you've collected it before, you can kind of see what monsters actually drop it go research the monster, find out the drop rate. So that was really cool. It shows where they're at on the map. Um, so all those different things I really liked because, you know, in previous Castlevania games, you'd kind of have to just look up guides to figure that kind of stuff out. But this one actually has it all right in the game, which is really fun and really cool. So I like that aspect. Um, definitely has the same kind of level up mechanic. You kill monsters, you get experience, you level up, right? You get more HP, more MP. So very similar to other Castlevania games that you've played before if you played them. Um, so I still like that aspect to it as well. You know, there's big boss fights throughout the game, um, all kinds of different monsters, ton of variety with that. You get the same kind of powers that you get, um, you know, the double jump, the, the super high flying jump, the speed boost where you can go around the screen really fast. So a lot of similarities to uh, the other Castlevania games. I really just felt kind of like I was playing uh, a Castlevania Symphony of the Night clone, um, but with a, a new storyline and some different graphics. So that was really cool because I, I really enjoyed that gameplay, but I also felt like the game was really long. You you know, I felt that it was pretty much like the equivalent of like the castle and the inverted castle in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, maybe even a little bigger than that as well. So like there's a lot to play within the game. Um, it wasn't super difficult. You know, there wasn't a ton of times where I was dying throughout the game unless just made a stupid mistake or something like that, but it wasn't uh, incredibly challenging boss fights. Maybe I was just overprepared. Um, you know, there's a couple that were a little bit tough, but for the most part, they weren't incredibly difficult as you play through the game. And so, you know, it, it's good paced. It was addicting. There's a lot of things that I liked about it. I, I wish the story was certainly more engaging, um, but overall, I definitely recommend this game. I think it's a lot of fun. It's worth picking up. Um, you know, some of the downsides though is things like, uh, there's there's glitches, right? So, you know, kind of, kind of because I think it's more of a Kickstarter game, you know, that maybe they didn't have as huge of a team to work on it. It kept being delayed as it was. Um, so there's little glitches that you kind of find throughout the game as you're playing. So the screen might freeze for a second or a lot of times I would find I would kill monsters and their items would drop and they just kind of be stuck in the middle of something and you couldn't ever really get it. Um, so that part was certainly frustrating, uh, but eventually you would get the items if you sat around long enough, it would open the bag and you'd get them. So, you know, it didn't really detract from the gameplay a ton. 
There was one of the bosses that you could fight as well where this, I felt like I was playing regular Nintendo because, um, you know, for how much the screen actually slowed down and everything kind of went into slow-mo as you were fighting the boss. And I think it was just maybe processor overload or whatever the case might be. You know, for me, I'm not somebody that's really nitpicky about like frame rates or anything like that. That doesn't really bother me, right? I've been playing video games since, you know, the NES, so who cares, right, about those kind of things. But um, for me, that's not a big deal, so that wasn't really a detractor. But uh, those glitches here and there were certainly noticeable. Um, you know, for me, I actually picked up the PlayStation 4 version of the game and I actually did that. I wanted to get it on Switch, but a lot of the content that I'd seen out there, a lot of people talking about it, doing reviews, I talked about kind of the lagginess of it, the input delay, the downgraded graphics. And so uh, I decided just to get the PlayStation 4 version and kind of avoid that altogether. Um, I wish that it, you know, it was maybe a cooler version on the Switch, but you know, I'd probably recommend not getting that version. Um, they had talked about upgrading it and kind of fixing those bugs, but I figured it might as well just not deal with that to begin with if I've got the other systems, I'll just pick it on one that actually runs better. And so that's not a, kind of a, maybe a word of warning <laughs> to you um, to maybe not get this on the Switch if you're considering uh, getting this game. But again, it, it's a lot of fun. There's also, once you beat it, you can unlock kind of a new game plus and replay through the game on a harder difficulty. You keep all your stuff if you want, or just, you know, again, start from scratch. But there's a, a lot of content to this game. They're continually adding to it, to my understanding as well, and doing different DLC updates. So there's supposed to be other playable characters as you go through the game as well uh, maybe i just haven't found that or it's in the dlc i'm not 100 percent sure uh, but definitely worth picking up this game again you know bloodstained ritual of the night ton of fun worth picking up definitely add it to your nerd library but let me know in the comments below have you unlocked uh, other characters like it says they're supposed to be on the back of the game you know it says that there is but i haven't found them yet so maybe that's something i just don't know but let me know in the comments below do you feel like it holds up to castlevania is it up to that standard you know i feel like it's close it's obviously not castlevania the story is a little bit different but the gameplay i definitely feel like is is up there on par with those games so let me know in the comments below though how you feel about this game do you like it do you hate it Are you looking to check it out uh, now that you've learned more about it let me know in the comments below so again guys hopefully you got some benefit and value out of this video if you did again feel free to comment and share definitely hit that like button as it really helps out the channel as well and if you haven't done so yet be sure to subscribe to our channel turn on those bell notifications to get the latest updates of new videos making sure you can play the best games out there and then also if you'd like to help us support the channel help us get out content faster and more definitely consider becoming a patron of ours over at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash patreon Again, that's nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon. And if you'd like to plug into our live streams and our Let's Plays as well that we do from time to time, uh, feel free to follow us on Twitch as well over at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. Again, that's nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But again, thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll talk to you more soon.